name is Laura, and you have joined us with Grow Your Business Through Collaboration. And today, my partner and I, we're going to talk to you a little bit about how that works. Let me tell you first who I am and who my partner is. I am Laura Bewer. I'm founder of CoachMeLaura.com and At Your Service Mobile Notary. And I've been a California notary for 16 years and a seminar instructor for the NNA. And I'm a veteran of many NNA conferences. Joining me today is my colleague and collaborator, Bill Soroka. Bill, would you say a little bit about who you are? Sure. Thank you so much, Laura. I appreciate the intro. And I love that you and I are collaborating on the project about collaboration. This is exciting. So everyone, my name is Bill Soroka. I'm the founder of notarycoach.com and author of the Amazon best-selling book, Sign and Thrive, How to Make Six Figures as a Mobile Notary and Loan Signing Agent. But I haven't always been a notary. I have uh, a past of trying and experimenting. I'm a serial entrepreneur that has failed in more than my share of businesses. But one of the things I do is I learn as I go along all the way. So one of my superpowers has been something that's called lateral thinking. And that's basically when you learn something for a particular business or industry and you apply it to a different business and industry. So I've been doing that through um, all those little flops and ups and downs and collaboration has been a key ingredient to many of those projects. So I, I'm excited that I was able to bring that forth in this business too and find amazing people like Laura and so many others that we can collaborate on. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, I'd like to take a few moments before we get into our material to share a little bit about why we like to collaborate with each other. Uh, first of all, Bill has helped me bring about projects which include products and services that I just could not have accomplished uh, on my own. He brings new skill sets that I didn't have and new connections that I didn't have. The other thing is because it's just more fun. I have more fun working on a project with somebody who's like-minded, uh, who enjoys being part of the process, and I love sharing the journey with Bill. Uh, and really, I just feel I'm lucky to have, I call him a power partner, because there's no limit to the joy and the success I'm experiencing and will continue to experience when I collaborate with Bill. Bill, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I love that. And thank you for that, Laura. There's um, many things that I'm grateful for with uh, the relationship that you and I have. I um, One thing I'm not known for is my uh, attention to detail. Like personally, I just don't get in there. Sometimes I don't read as deep as or as far as I should. Laura brings that to the table. Laura knows everything before she opens her mouth. And I love that because I, that's something that, that's a skill set that I don't have. So partnering with her has been a blessing, not only because Laura, you bring so much value to the notary community, but you bring value to my own notary business. I mean, how many times have I called you on the personal hotline, cell phone to cell phone, asking you a question about Arizona law? So this is what's so exciting about collaboration. The skills, the knowledge that Laura has kind of transfers over to you. And it's all about uh, its personality, its network, its resources, its knowledge, all of that coming together to help accomplish one goal or multiple goals. So I love it. Thanks for including me in so much, Laura. You're welcome. So as you can see, um, we've had a few years to work together uh, and you really start to find that you start thinking the same. And, and before I know it, I know what Bill's going to say because I know, you know how he goes about doing things and that makes it really comfortable for me. So let's talk about what you're going to walk away with. Uh, when you're done with our workshop. Uh, first of all, we want you to know what collaboration is and what it's not. We will talk to you about how collaboration can grow your business faster than you could do it by yourself. And there's certainly some considerations. You want to make sure you successfully choose collaborators. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then identify well, what kinds of projects, what kinds of things could I do uh, to work with somebody else, not just myself. And finally, 
By the time you're done, we're going to give you lots of ideas to start your own collaborative project. So here's the roadmap for today. We'll start out talking about what collaboration is and what are the benefits to that. Then we'll talk about the levels of collaboration and what kinds of collaborative projects uh, might be available. We'll talk about, well, where do I find these collaborators? And importantly, we're going to get a little deeper into this idea that collaboration transforms uh, your business. It isn't just about the transactions you conduct. There are considerations for when you're choosing a collaborator and what kind of project you are choosing to work on, and we'll give you plenty of examples. And then at the end, we are going to talk about you trying this on your own. So it's quite a bit packed in today. Bill? Yeah, it is. That's a ton of information. I'm so excited for this, guys. So let's talk a little bit about competition versus collaboration. Sometimes this is often referred to as scarcity mindset versus abundance mindset. So let's take a look first at the competitive side, often re commonly referred to as the scarcity mindset. If you feel this way, you're not alone. In fact, most of us reside on this side of things. It's kind of ingrained uh, for us here in the West. Most people are in this state of competition rather than collaboration. So competition is focused mainly on the self. It's also a very low level of thinking because it, it limits you to only the things that you can accomplish, whereas we'll learn differently on collaboration. And then people who are competing are oftentimes just focused on winning. So a lot of times what you find here is a mentality of the end justifying the means. So that's where integrity lapses happen. That's when uh, it's easy to lose interest or have the shiny object syndrome as well. You kind of skip a few steps just to get to the winner. So let's look at the other side of this, collaboration. This is often called the abundance mindset. So collaboration allows for inclusive activity. This isn't just us. This is opening the doors to include others, others' networks, resources, etc. Collaboration is a much higher level principle than competition because it's based on the idea that there's plenty for everyone and that we can all rise together. Collaboration is an act of combining skills, connection, and power, generating ways to solve challenges. So if you've ever asked yourself, am I living in one, side, one column too much over the other? One question you can always ask yourself is, does it serve you? Does it serve your vision for what you want your life to be? Does it serve your business? Does it serve your goals? Does it serve your dream? And does it serve you and the people you're working to protect or to provide for? So what does collaboration mean? Collaboration means working together with one or more people to achieve a result greater than you can alone. It isn't necessarily just reciprocal, like I'll do this for you and you do this for me. It can absolutely be paid forward at any time. And it might be later on down the road. So we want to start thinking really big picture stuff here, guys. Sometimes whenever you work or you collaborate with somebody or you provide information or services, that may not be, it may not even be associated where the payoff comes down the road for you to help someone else, for someone else to help you, you just never know what that's going to look like. Collaboration can also be a one-time project, which is very common too. Maybe it's just a workshop, maybe it's a one-time interview, or it can be an ongoing creation. Very similar to what Laura and I do, we'll talk a little bit about that, but we have an ongoing regular coaching call, we have an ongoing project where we um, work with one of the training products, but we also do one-offs all every now and then too. So we collaborate here, we collaborate here, and you can do that with a variety of different people. Laura, can you tell them why it's so important or why you like to collaborate? Yeah, you know what? It's faster and easier when you share the load with somebody else, um, number one. Number two, um, it highlights you can focus on your strengths, what you're good at. Uh, and your partner is going to bring those other strengths so that you're minimizing uh, a lack of resources or a lack of skill. Um, and so that brings me to my next uh, idea of there are so many things besides being a notary uh, that I need to know. 
uh, if I want to have a thriving business. And so I can't learn all the skills myself. Uh, and, and why spend the time doing that uh, when there are people around me who have them? And the way I can get to those is it's opening up new connections for me. So if I allow myself to be open uh, to work with other people uh, for whatever it is, uh, I will have an opportunity to be building more connections. And when you build a connection, I want you to think bigger than one person. It might start out as one person at a time, but that connection leads to another connection, leads to other connections. And it creates larger opportunities for me. I've been able to gain a larger audience and following because of the collaborative projects I've worked on um, with Bill. Uh, also, uh, as I've gone to conferences and I've met colleagues who are on the other side of the United States, so they're my once a year friends that I see them in person, but it doesn't mean that I can't collaborate with them throughout the year, uh, either because they've got expertise that I don't, uh, and it's a whole audience over, you know, on that side of the uh, uh, United States. Uh, that gives me a national reach instead of my own little world, my own little community of Modesto, California. Uh, and it allows for uh, new ideas, new products, new products, new services uh, to be developed. Absolutely. So can we talk a little bit more about um, why we'd want to collaborate? So for me, if, if I just want to do what I've been doing, let's just say I, I do loan signing work and, you know, that's fine. And that's just it. Uh, the, the problem is that's so limited in terms of being a business owner because that may not always be what works. It works right now, maybe it has worked in the past. So how do I expand that idea to do other, other work? How do I expand um, getting new knowledge? I, I have to uh, involve other people for me to do that. And I expanded my business outside of just doing the work. I also expanded into the area of coaching and to doing other kinds of things, uh, and particularly helping other notaries expand their business, expand their knowledge. And if I'm not open to that, then I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing. It's first of all, it's kind of lonely and isolated. And I think there's a lot of notaries out there who feel that way. You know, they're out there doing their own business from their own home and they take care of the clients and they come back to their own home and there's no one to share that journey with, right? Even if it's not to do a project, but just to get feedback, just to have somebody to share a bad appointment, a good appointment, a different appointment. Mm -hmm. These are things that bring joy to owning this business, to doing this kind of work. And so for me personally, that uh, is pretty high on my list of collaborating with somebody is, does that bring more joy into my life? Does that bring more skill and knowledge into my life? Do I have an opportunity to support somebody else? Because I think when you're part of something bigger than yourself, it changes your outlook and it changes how you feel about things. So yeah. that's my personal feeling about collaboration. I love that. And what a perfect demonstration to why I love to work with you. Uh, you've got the, a very similar mindset that I do. And you can, when you think about life, life is all about expansion, expansion, growth, you know, learning, whatever it is, you want to do the same thing for your business. And as we mentioned on a, a couple slides ago, when you're in competitive state, you're really limiting your mindset to only what you can accomplish. When you start thinking bigger, you start expanding whatever your business is going to look like. Think about it from a customer perspective. They're looking for a resource. And the more resourceful you are, the more you can give them what they want, which is resources. It may not be a service that you have, but maybe you know somebody. Making those connections, becoming that super connector is going to make you valuable to the marketplace. And the reality is, guys, we get paid in direct proportion to the value we bring to the marketplace. So what should always be on our mind is how can I bring more value? And how do you bring more value? You learn, you expand, you connect, and you bring more and more resources to your audience, whatever that is. Maybe it is the general public. Maybe you are a notary public just 
looking for more signing clients, living trusts, whatever it is, powers of attorney, t auto transfers, whatever that might be, that's your audience. And your audience is craving something. Give them what they crave. That's why I love to collaborate because I can't be everything to everyone. That's exhausting. And they're sure there's a part of my ego that would love just to be the, everybody just come here. I'm the only way. This is the only way you can do this. Or I know everyone. So come here. I don't. And that is truly exhausting. But I know a lot of people. I know a lot of resources that I can, can make connections for. So that is probably the main reason that I love to collaborate. It's just to bring more value. I love that. Uh, that idea of bringing value to those around me. Uh, because that is what people need. All right. So let's talk about the different levels. Yeah. So, you know, we don't want to, when we think about collaboration, and maybe we see somebody or meet somebody somewhere and think, wow, I want to do something with them. And, you know, we're in a full-on collaboration, some big event, and there's, there are financial resources involved. There are people, human resources involved. There's a lot of things involved in that, but you don't really know them yet. So I want you to think about um, the appropriate level, what level you're at with the person you think you're going to collaborate with, um, and uh, what kind of um, relationship you have with them. So I love, Bill, that you say so often, we like to work with people we know, like, and trust. So it might start out with, I met you at a seminar or a webinar or a conference or a meetup, and we've just met and we're part of this group. And I think, yeah, I, I think I might like to work with that person, you know? And so uh, as we continue through that group, we have some periodic kinds of uh, interactions. Um, and so that might be that first level. And, you know, when I think I like somebody and I think I might like to work with them, I'm going to look for opportunities to go outside of that community and reach out to that person, uh, maybe at other uh, meetups or invite them to a networking group. Uh, um, it might be emails. It might be texting or calls or Zoom calls. So that I can start to uh, really feel confident and, and comfortable with this person. I need to get to know them. That's the no. People we like, know, and trust. And so now I'm going to be having ongoing communication. This is somebody that I'm going to be doing more sharing with. That's that level three, kind of in the middle. I know you a little bit. I like you for sure. I think I want to work with you. Not quite sure exactly what it is yet, but we're starting to really solidify that connection. Uh, and again, it start, the connection now is more between us, not connected necessarily to the group or the meeting that I met you in first. Then we're gonna move up to level four where I'm building trust with you. And now we start identifying shared goals, um, some uh, common interest. And we might start coming up with ideas to say, you know, I, I'd like to uh, work on such and such with you. I was thinking about it myself, but it would be helpful, I think, if we did this together. And of course, full-on collaboration, these are big projects. These are projects that might involve, as I said, as I said, um, uh, full collaboration in terms of financial resources and visibility and human resources. Uh, there might be products that are being sold. There might be a website involved. There's a lot going on. And you probably don't want to be doing that when you are level one or two, right? So. Right. Uh, I want you to be thinking about how well do you know, like, and trust somebody before you choose what kind of collaborative effort you're going to put forth. I love this because it really, what we're mapping out here is like a, a, re a relationship, right? Level yeah. one, you, you kind of meet them and you kind of flash your eyes at them. And then you might ask them out on a date or to coffee or something. And maybe a few more and you're kind of feeling each other out. Do I like this person? Do I want to move forward? Do they have the same values as I do? Those are the types of things that you're figuring out. That's why it's so important not to skip from level one to level five too soon. Because that's when mistakes happen. You start partnering with somebody who's not in it for the win-win. It might be lopsided. So each one of these steps is so critically important. They are. And you know, Bill, um, a couple times we've talked about it as people have as we've seen people jump like this where they, you know, want to get married on the first date. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so, you know, we just can't go there because you may get yourself entangled in things 
that are difficult to get out of. Exactly, exactly. So let's look at this and give you guys some examples. Um, both Laura and I came up with some examples to fit into these different types. So if you have not been taking notes yet, this is the time where you wanna pick up a pen and actually write down some of these ideas because we're gonna give you exact uh, examples of collaborations that we've seen actually taking part or even participated in ourselves. So this first one, we're gonna start with the level one type of collaboration. So this is just kind of that intro level conversation, getting to know each other. So a skill sharing and exchange. So one of the ideas, um, just in the most simple form, is that some mobile notaries just choose to be loan signing agents only. They do not want to do general notary work. So you could partner or collaborate with another notary who performs general notary work, and then you would get the loan signing balance out there. Laura, did you have any other ideas on skills? Yeah, you know, there's lots of skills to be a business owner. Some of us need help with, with um, uh, bookkeeping, so software, learning software. Maybe I use a software and you'd like to know how to utilize that and, and how I use that in my business. Uh, it might be an Excel spreadsheet. It might be um, uh, notary. I may be more proficient at notary acts and can help you understand uh, notary acts that you don't do all the time or understand how to break that down. So we each have something to offer, but it's really, there, there's minimal risk in what we're, we're doing. Exactly, exactly. And so before we even move on too much, I wanna go back to how we started out this presentation where I was talking about lateral thinking and about bringing skills that we have learned previously into our current business. One of the biggest challenges I have as a coach, and Laura, you tell me if you run into the same problem, but my biggest challenge as a coach is convincing other people of their own greatness. So a lot of that ties in to what you have done in the past. It's almost as if we, we shut the door on whatever we were doing before and then we forgot all the other skill sets and everything matter for this business too. So if you were tech support before, if you worked in a restaurant, you have customer service skills that you might take for granted, but other people don't have because they didn't have the hit career history or the past that you do. So everything that you are bring into this business that makes it authentically yours. And all of those skill sets will serve you because here's what I've learned in this business. Every notary public is a human being first. All of your skills, all of that matters in this work. So let's talk now Keeping that in mind, let's go into teach someone how to use a tool. A great example of this is Laura uh, does um, periodic skill builders. She just talked about, uh, we just did an aposti work, skill builder. And there are some people around the country who are really good at aposti work. So they can teach you how to use that tool in your business. They can be a connection for you. So that would be um, one great way or another one is the uh, popularity of mobile offices where you have a full setup in your vehicle. It takes some tech savvy to set that up, but if you have become a pro at that, guess what? People need that. That is a perfect trade of information. Laura, I know you have some good ones on this one too. Yeah, you know, I, I just love the ones that you mentioned because that's what I'd be looking for is who knows how to do that part. Here I have, I'm supposed to have a mobile office because I'm a mobile notary and, you know, I just don't really have that uh, skill set and I'm a little nervous about all that tech stuff being plugged into my car. So uh, when I've uh, heard people on the forums, Facebook forums, and they're telling me and they're showing pictures, it's like, oh, okay, now I get it. Yes. And that's somebody I'm going to want to connect uh, with. Um, another thing is uh, sharing tips. So, you know, Bill mentioned early on that there's a difference. We, we love our competition, right? I don't see other notaries as competition. I see them as my colleagues. And I see that we get more business and grow business together than when we're competing against each other. So um, sharing marketing tips about how you identified a potential client, uh, what worked for you in a mailing, these are things that can help all of us uh, grow uh, our business. 
and learn from, you know, oh, you know what? I found out. Don't do this. Because that doesn't work. Yep. Um, learning those kinds of things are so beneficial. Um, uh, I love it when someone shares their hack on, you know, how I made this work, you know, so I don't have to figure it out from scratch. Exactly. Exactly. One great element to this whole thing, too, is also all of this, everything that you are and sharing it, making it so people know that you're even out there doing things, social media, blogs, email, whatever it is. Uh, the accountability, buddy. I loved that you included this on the forum, Laura. Can you tell us what you had in mind with that? Yeah, you know, there are so many things that we tell ourselves we're going to do. Um, and that could be, I'm going to walk every day. I'm going to read a, a book every month. Um, I'm going to write. Uh, I'm going to uh, make my list, build my list of prospects, whatever it is. It could be work related. It could be personal development related. It could be your relationship world related. Whatever it is, you know, it helps so much to have some kind of accountability uh, because we're not always so good at being accountable to ourselves. I'm much more accountable publicly than privately. Yeah. So having somebody that uh, is willing to check in with me and hold my feet to the fire about doing what I said I was going to do uh, is really helpful. Again, it's not that much more uh, in terms of uh, uh, risk, because uh, who's going to know but you and that person? Uh, but it is, it does take a little bit more knowing each other and starting to build that trust with each other. Um, and I have used um, accountability systems. I use my phone and it has reminders. Uh, but really, uh, being able to get in touch with somebody and they say, hey, how is that project going? Didn't you say last week that you were going to be making five calls this week? Did you make them? Oh, what were the results? Having somebody who's right with me on my journey just makes it better. It really does. You know, just because we're in business for ourselves does not mean that we have to be in business by ourselves. You know, I'm fiercely independent. So I resisted accountability partners for as long as I can remember. Uh, but when I started doing it, I started doing it more as a gift to the other person. I was like, okay. I'll be your accountability partner. But what that very quickly started doing is holding me accountable because nobody wants to let other people down. So in that enthusiasm, the shared enthusiasm of the other person being excited, they're being held accountable. They're holding you accountable. Even if you think you're not being, you are, it really is an awesome system and it works for, there's a reason that gurus talk about it. So let's talk about brainstorm. It's on that same level. Um, I love brainstorming because guys, the notary business, if you just looked at the notary business, it's real easy to fall into boredom with it. If you just looked at it at the surface, right? It's not the most exciting topic. I love it. I love the possibilities and potentials. It's important that we geek out together. Find somebody that you can, that loves the business as much as you do. So you can bounce some ideas off them. Get super creative. You know, for all the great ideas I've had, I've had millions of terrible ideas that I still tried. You know, I used to try to, I said I was going to get Starbucks coffee for every signer. So I started texting people, trying to take their Starbucks orders and get to uh, signing appointments on time. Didn't work. Obviously, it's expensive and it was a, quite a hassle. But had I had a brainstorm buddy, they could have just said, that's, that's a crazy idea. That's not going to work. Laura would have told me it would not have worked. Laura, what about you? What, what do you have on brainstorm? Gosh, I have, like you, um, I have a book that I just record different ideas I come up with. And, you know, a lot of them are half-baked <laughs> kinds of ideas. Wouldn't it be great to do this, uh, like you described? Uh, but some of them, there are some kernels in there that if somebody else, if I could tell somebody else, here's what I see, and they could say, hey, you know what, that sounds great, but you know what, you're going to have an issue with this. Here's where I see the issue. Take that out of the equation. Now, it's doable. Yeah. Uh, or that, you know, Bill, you said earlier about convincing people of their own greatness, of their own ability and skill. And, you know, we, a lot of us suffer from that imposter uh, syndrome yeah. where we, when it's our idea, we think, oh, people are going to think that's crazy. But when we hear somebody else say it, uh, we think, wow, that's like the greatest thing since sliced bread. It, and it's just because they said it instead of us. Yeah. Um, and having somebody hear me. Of course, that does take, you're starting to build some more trust here 
to, to like share what's inside of me, what I'm thinking and have somebody else give feedback to that can be a little scary sometimes. So that's why it's important. You don't just do that with everybody. Uh, you don't want to be publicly brainstorming uh, necessarily, but having a few people that can uh, check your ideas uh, and, and they know you a little bit, so they might be able to say, you know, somebody else may, able, may be able to do that, but I don't think that's in your wheelhouse. I don't think that's one, is that one of your skills? Uh, are you gonna have to farm that out? Right, so, right. Uh, and I uh, have made use of that. I have probably about five or six people that I regularly check in with and say, hey, I was thinking about this, what do you think? And uh, almost always there's some piece in there that turns into something. Yeah, I love that. And sometimes it's two, you know, different pieces of 10 different ideas that come together and give you what you want. So, and talking, just the uh, talking it out changes everything too. It does. So let's go on to offering a bonus on each other's program. And I know there's a lot of people on here who are already trainers. You might be moving into training. You might have a skill set you want to bring in or a different way of thinking or no training at all. And you just want uh, some type of uh, continuity or security in your business by building these types of collaborations. So we have a couple of ideas here too. So um, when we say program, it doesn't necessarily have to be a training program. It could just be your program of services. So one of the most popular things that I've done and that I currently have lots of students doing is um, partnering with having a strategic alliance. Right. collaborative partnership with uh, attorneys, uh, escrow officers, whatever it might be. One of the best ones, as an example, is having offering a free estate planning review appointment with an estate planning attorney that they're working with. And in exchange for that, the attorney includes mobile notary fees for their living trust or whatever their appointments are in the cost of his package. So it's a reciprocal relationship for both of them. Laura, you had a good example on this one too, right? Um, you know, really, just let's, let's talk about notaries uh, who are just doing notary services. And one of the things I did is that I um, built a network of notaries that were an alliance. And we are um, sharing the work. So I'm referring people to them, and they're referring people to other notaries. And so back and forth, we're sharing that load of notary work that needs to get done, but we're not all available, or we may not have the skill for that particular job. And being able to do that as a group uh, and, and feel that we are helping each other do well is incredible. And for me, I, this group started back in about 2005, 2006. Uh, so it's been around for a while, and it's in Central California, although I do have connections elsewhere. And Having the ability to know that you have a partner that you can move work to, to say, hey, can you take this assignment, uh, or to help them, or even help them within the assignment. Sometimes I'm doing the assignment, but it was too big, and I needed somebody else to come. Um, a friend of mine, uh, Joyce, who does life scan work, um, she does big groups sometimes, and she brings in other people for that assignment to help her get through that. Uh, and so they, they both get to participate in that. And I love when that can happen. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, it, yeah, that's just awesome. So now the next one is to co-create a product or a workshop. So we're definitely moving up in the level, right? A couple levels now, right? We're at level three. So this is a higher level engagement, higher level investment of time, energy, and resources on both of you. But this can be really powerful. One of the... Uh, cool um, examples of this that I've seen. Uh, we created over at Notary Coach a certified reverse mortgage signing professional certification to help uh, grow the reverse mortgage education. So uh, some of our students are now partnering with loan officers that specialize in reverse, in particular reverse for purchase, because you can use a reverse mortgage to buy a home. But a lot of real estate agents don't know that. So we have notaries that are partnering with the loan officers that do the reverse mortgages to do a presentation to real estate agents that do not know that the reverse mortgage product can be used for purchases so they can get more business. And then you bring a title company in. A lot of times title companies will actually pay, cover the expenses of that level of training because that's a room full of real estate agents 
and guess who escrow officers want to work with? Loan officers and real estate agents. So that's a really good example of how to co-create a product or a workshop that way. Uh, that's fabulous. Um, something on a personal level for me, um, Bill and I uh, co-created something called Skill Builders. Uh, and these Skill Builders are uh, really notary skill uh, and um, uh, expanding your business into different specialties. And, you know, um, here's where it started, where it's a free, you know, I'm going to do it for free. Bill and I uh, collaborated on what it was going to be and how we were going to get out there and all the marketing effort it takes to get the word out that it's available and uh, running the kind of like producing the actual uh, day of the event and uh, recording it and, and all of the stuff it takes to do that. And of course the content specifically. So between us, we were able to get our hands around all of that. And what we found was people loved it, right? People love these. And there wasn't, you know, it's a little bit um, uh, more visibility, right? A little more risk, but there was no money involved at the time. We were just doing this to try to help educate those. But you know, that ended up, going to the next level for us. And I ended up uh, having a product that's for sale uh, later. And we'll talk about that later or Laura Bewer presents, but that's not where it started. It started with, I wanted to help notaries and I needed, I had a good message. I had good content, good training, but I didn't know how to get it out and step in bill. And between us, we were able to produce something that is highly desirable and helpful and of value to notaries. I love that this is a great example, guys, of transformation and of the becoming process. You know, this was an idea that was born in a free online skill builder. Let's just help elevate, raise the bar in the industry, give people the training and the education they need so they can be amazing at what they do. And that's going to fuel the whole, in, whole uh, industry. And then it grows and Laura and I get to know each other more. We figure out what's making each other tick. We're on the same level and we can grow and grow and it gradually transforms closer and closer to whatever it's going to become. But again, we're not forcing it. It's kind of or the organic becoming process. Laura's got to learn. I've got a lot to learn and we just got to come together in those times. We don't want to rush the relationship. Exactly. So let's talk about um, watching critiquing a presentation. This one I think we can keep pretty sweet, but you can always support others with feedback. Feedback is one thing that we're craving. And if, if you can help somebody, if they've gone out on a limb, let's say they wrote a book and they need somebody to, to read it and make sure there's nothing missing. Or a course, Laura's done this for me, right? I'm, I think probably a couple different courses right now. She's been a beta tester for me. That kind of stuff really works. Very helpful. The uh, speaking of which, well, let's talk about review a product or give a testimonial. Laura, I know you're going to have a really great example, guys, but what I'd like to just say is giving a review, especially a positive review, is one of the greatest demonstrations of gratitude that you can offer anyone. Whether that is a, a course, a book, um, a breakfast, a dinner, a meal, anything, Whatever, some sort of experience, businesses are fueled by re reviews. And that, I think there's something that says that 90% of American consumers make purchases based on the reviews of other people. So that's a huge, powerful tool. And if you ever wanted a foot in the door somewhere, offering the review first, it goes a long way. I can't remember, there, there's this one author, I read her book reached out to her, wanted to work with her. And she goes, did you, did you post a review? And I had not. And that was one of the most devastating feelings. I'm like, what was I? I totally missed it. I totally should have done that. So that was kind of an awkward conversation. I made up for it big time, but I don't, don't allow space for those types of conversations. Go ab above and beyond, make the review first, whatever it is, and then follow up and start working with them. Laura, what do you have to say on reviews? Yeah, you know what? On reviews, first of all, I agree. Giving the reviews is really uh, more important than the reviews you get. Uh, being out there and visibly participating in uh, you know, our social network of uh, buying and sharing things is really important. Um, one of the things that uh, is a great example that worked well for me 
uh, is that there are shipping centers in my city. Uh, and uh, there, besides the Kinkos and the UPS, there are a lot of private postal depots. And I've gotten to know, um, you know, most of them. And there's a couple in particular that we've built relationships and, and there's been lots of give and take between us and it's been a wonderful relationship for us. But one of the things I did, remember they do notary service right there on site, right? That's what I do, I do notary service. But really we have different customers, right? Their customers don't need mobile service. Their customers need to go in, take care of whatever it is and run out and they just wanna pay the 15 bucks or the 10 bucks or whatever it is they can uh, be charged for that and be done. Uh, and then of course, my service is very different, even though the product that we sell is the same, which is the notarization. And so I have, um, uh, when I get phone calls, I'm referring people to these two shipping centers in particular. I'm refer referring them. I know their hours. I know uh, when there's a notary on site. Um, I know their limitations because I've gotten to know them. Uh, and I've taken it a step further. And on my own website for my own service, I have a shipping center that I love. I know the owner. I've known her for over 10 years, uh, and she provides great service. And so I have her on my website. And I say, look, if you don't need mobile service, you need to go here because she's going to take care of you. Uh, and I know it sounds counterintuitive <laughs> to be taking my own space to uh, recognize uh, and offer uh, but I'm going to tell you, it makes a difference because people see me as a resource, not just as the notary, number one. Um, number two, what do you think she's doing? When she gets people that are not her customers, ultimately, where are they coming? She's referring them right back to me. Yes. Um, so it's really, in, in this case, it happens to be reciprocal. It doesn't always have to be that way. There are sometimes I'm referring people out for services that, are beyond the scope of my job. Uh, and I, it, I think it's really important for you to know about these services and speak about these services at, and be prepared because it's one of the ways you can expand yourself as a resource. Absolutely, that's a perfect example of abundant thinking. You're, you trust that there's plenty in the world, so it's okay to put this, com this businesses, the small businesses information on your website, and it does, it pays off in, um, in gold. The, uh, I'm going to kind of skip over the beta test because we've talked about it a little bit earlier too. But if you have, if you happen to be in a group or community where somebody is striving to reach their goals or their dreams, and it, if it's a course, if it's any kind of program and they ask you to be a beta, if it's within your wheelhouse, with if it's in your realm or your time or your energy, there's huge reward in being that person for somebody because it's, it's challenging to do that. Um, and then, I, like I said, Laura's, I've roped her into a, quite a few things on our get known strategy, all that, all that, I pitch it over to Laura for feedback and she gives great critical free feedback on it too, that helps us be better at what we do. Um, I'm sorry, let me just add in there, Bill. Um, yeah. In the meetups, like when I write a, a new presentation that I'd like to check out before a conference or before something else, a bigger group, I'll present it to the meetup group as their topic and then they can give me feedback about what they learned or didn't learn or I didn't have enough of this or that. So sometimes you can utilize, if you have a group that you're a part of, that's a great uh, resource to you right there. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, get feedback. Yep, excellent, love it. Uh, and then the, you've touched on this just now, offering visibility on your website. Yeah. Guys, if you have products, services, or people that you believe in, having them on your website is a great, way to express that. It might only be a few clicks per month, if anything at all, but what that does for your relationship is worth way more than any clicks that you're going to get. So if you've got the web, the design know-how or the way to add somebody to the website, I highly recommend that you do that. Uh, and uh, it's a, gr well, it's just a great testimony. Right. That you are in it together, win-win. And that is really visible, and you're going to see we have that, you know, higher level, because now, remember that, ref uh, and where it's going to tie into the referring clients uh, to each other, referrals are a reflection of you. So I, I uh, participate 
in some of these online referral systems. Alignable is one of them. There's a lot of them. And, you know, oh, so-and-so wants to uh, connect with you. Okay, great, I connect. And the next thing you know, they want me to give a review. Not the person, but the system is pushing that. And so what I, I want you to think about is when you do this, uh, make sure it's an honest review, meaning you have experience with it, you know what it is, um, because a false, uh, a false endorsement or a false review can come back and bite you, you know, you know where. Right. Yep. Right? So you want to make sure that this is the kind of stuff you're doing with people that you know, like, and trust. Absolutely. So let's go on to the level five um, collaborations now. Now we're talking about endorsing each other on social media. So this would be a strategy of really introducing whoever this person or this resource or this tool might be to the people who already know, like, and trust you. So it's a whole other level. And that's why you have to grow and it has to evolve into this so that you have that trust is going to automatically be transferred to this new person. So you want to make sure that fit is right. So when it comes to social media, it's posts, it's sharing theirs. It might be tagging them in posts. It might be sharing their events, any number of things. Laura, did you have some other ideas on that one? All of those were my ideas <laughs> on that one, the tagging, sharing uh, their posts. Uh, sometimes somebody will ask a question, and what will happen is they'll just write my name. They'll just post my name, which means it's tagged me. Uh, it says somebody tagged you. I go to the conversation. I see what the question is, and then I can add to that conversation. Yes. Exactly. And I love when that happens. Yeah, me too. And as an example on this, um, through social media, whether it was restaurants or whatever it is, being tagged on Facebook in particular really boosted my business because I share my journey, right? I'm very passionate about what I do. I share my journey. I share when my tire goes flat. I share when I find the chicken fried steak of my dreams. I share when signers are loving and laughing. I share when they're cranky, you know, all of that. So people know what I do. So I get tagged all day long in Facebook for people looking for a notary. That's just another uh, side effect to this kind of sharing. Now let's talk about referring clients to each other. One of the beautiful things uh, about collaborating or just in business in general is that you have the power to make somebody else's dream come true. So when it comes to this level of referring, you, the fastest way to building that trust is to bring them customers. If you believe in their services that much, why not? And I think Zig Ziglar said it best. He says, you can have anything you want in this life if you will just help enough other people get what they want. And this business really allows for that in many different ways. Laura, what ideas did you have on this? You know, I like to work um, with all of the, uh, beyond the scope of what I can do. So I work a lot with attorneys, senior law project is one of the places I work with. And so when I'm taking care of something and, and it comes to my attention, they're gonna need some legal assistance. I have phone numbers and names of people that I can refer them personally. Tell them Laura sent you. Um, also, I work a lot with paralegals. So when documents need to be prepared, not just notarized, uh, and of course they're notaries as well. So um, I, again, I say, okay, this is, you want to call Kelly. She's at For the People. She can prepare this document. If you can get in there, she'll notarize it for you too. If the person's in a hospital, she'll end up sending it back to me so I can go do my, my part of it. So one, I'm a better resource. Two, I get work referred back to me as well. And three, I'm, I'm, a, I'm part of a bigger community of resources. I'm not just the be all end all by myself. And you mentioned earlier, Bill, about that's exhausting and it's a heavy load to bear. Yeah. And so it's so much easier where I can say, look, that's not something I directly do, but I can hook you up with somebody who can. I know a guy is my favorite phrase. <laughs> Me too. I know I a, got guy. a guy. I got a guy for that. Yeah, I got it. You know, um, what I love about this, and the, one of the ways that you can dial in to what your clients or your audience wants is to ask, to ask yourself, what do they want? What do they need? Who is their ideal customer? How can I bring value to them? 
So when I started thinking about escrow officers, I know escrow officers need loan officers and real estate agents in order to thrive. They need people opening escrow. So when anytime I had a loan officer talking about, oh, my escrow officer quit or retired or yelled at me, so I'm looking for a new one, I am sending them, I'm connecting them, actively connecting them with my clients. So I'm bringing value to that way. Um, when it comes to real estate agents, I have tons of real estate agent friends and I have lots of other friends who buy houses. So I always try to make the connection and the introduction to people who are buying to people who are selling. Another one is with the attorneys. Attorneys are huge. They appreciate personal referrals. And another big one is builders. You know, one of my uh, biggest clients, two of my biggest clients are well-known home builders in Arizona. And anytime somebody talks in my, in my social network is talking about buying a home, I suggest one of my two builders and I have a phone number that they can call and they might even get the friends and family discount, which isn't very much anyway, but I'm just trying, I'm trying to fuel the relationship any way that I can. And that brings me to another really important point of this whole thing. If you're getting to level five, you need that level five or level 10 confidence level in your relationship. I don't work for home builders that I have to sit through complaints every single signing. They have a terrible reputation or anything like that. I don't want that level in my business. So I work with companies that I'm proud of and I'm proud to refer people to. I, I love that idea. And I refer probably throughout the day as much as I'm taking on work. Wow. Wow. Because I have a big referral system, whether it's referring notary jobs or it's referring to paralegals or to attorneys, um, I just think that the more I can connect people with other people, it builds my own connections. Yeah, definitely. Let's um, wrap it up now. The, the last one in level five, it's interviewing each other for your audience, which is really, Laura, kind of how we got introduced, right? It is, you know, early on, um, you uh, heard about me doing meetups, and I think that was one of our earlier conversations where you interviewed me about how do you organize a meetup, and how do you get people to come to the meetup, and what does that agenda look like? Because people were talking about it, and they didn't know how to do it. Yeah. And so we, we did that uh, together. That was an early one. Um, more recent was your book, when your book came out. Um, I did an interview with you about the book and what was it about and what people were going to find out. Uh, and uh, both of them were, you know, wonderfully received and uh, great, I think, for both of us. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I love doing that. I love, you know, for a couple of years now, I guess I've been saying that this industry is ripe for initiative and innovation, right? And now we've got this amazing community that was never around, guys. I mean, before what, three or four years ago, there wasn't this level of resourcefulness and people coming together and sharing information. So this is an exciting time to be in the business. But what, we've, what we're finding now is people are putting themselves out there. You've got podcasts that are coming out of nowhere. Notaries coming together to share information on a podcast about their notary work. Uh, I've got the Profiles in Ink uh, interview series that I love doing on YouTube. I love origin stories. I love hearing why people got in this business, but more importantly, why they stayed. So those types of opportunities are all around us, whether it's uh, blogs, uh, email, newsletters, training programs, everything. There's all kinds of options that you can get dialed into because other people are doing them. Or if you can't find a resource in your area, guess what? That might be you. It might be your turn to step up and provide that. Right. Guys, before we move on to uh, the next slide, what I just wanted to offer you is all of this that we're talking about here is really wrapped up in a bundle of personal development. Mm -hmm. Every, we have to be committed. That becoming process is not only the relationship, but it's also us. We've got to be constantly working on ourselves so we can we can let some things go when they don't go right so we can be that level of support for other people. So all of this comes with the understanding that it's constant flow, Kaizen, constant continuous improvement. So on the next slide, I think we're going to talk a little bit about the specific 
collaborative projects here? So, you know, it, it'd be, if we'd never done anything, it would be difficult to present <laughs> this material. Um, but I have um, a few really successful projects I've worked on uh, and continue to work on that I wanted to share. Now, a symposium for those of us who are in California was an idea that I had. I had that idea for years. Wouldn't it be great to have something local, something regional, where we could have kind of a mini conference, a one day event that wouldn't cost a lot of money and get some expertise in there and invest a one day thing for those of us who can't get to the national stage, to the national conferences. Um, wouldn't that be great? And it took uh, probably three or four years before I even was comfortable or brave enough to share the idea. And I shared the idea with one notary and uh, we put something on that first year uh, and 50 people showed up. 50 people showed up in Modesto, right? So people didn't have to drive too far away. It was pretty regional, just, just there. That uh, is now five years later and we have over 100 people. We have trade show people. We have sponsors. Uh, we have people flying in to speak. Uh, uh, it's something that started as, couldn't we have a get together? Something bigger than a meetup. And uh, here we go. So now, um, annually, I have the opportunity to meet with at face to face with all of these people, all these notaries who are interested in developing their skill, developing their business, developing themselves, and making connections. And I love that I can facilitate that process. Uh, so that's just one of my collaborative projects. Um, Bill, you want to talk about TNT? Yeah, Tuesday Notary Titans. This was originally, guys, again, we love origin stories, right? I love hearing, and Laura, you nailed it, right? The, when you had the courage to share the idea, that's really what it comes down to. So I honor you for that. And thank you for including me in that. Uh, the Tuesday Notary Titans, this started uh, as an idea. Uh, soon after I started uh, talking with Carol Ray over at notary to pro we had this idea for a breakfast club, just like an old fashioned call in radio show where people notaries could just come on to zoom and ask us questions. And it really took, started to take off and gain some steam. And Carol um, called me one day and said, I've got a friend. I think you need to meet. I'm just going to introduce you guys but I, and see what happens. And she introduced me to Laura, and I knew right away that I liked her. Number one, she's uh, an expert at what she does. Number two, she's got the heart. I'm very heart-driven. I'm here. We're in the, we have an amazing business that gives us a flexible schedule and unlimited income and a legitimate business that we love working with, but the money is not what drives me. I love being here to be of service to other people. And sure, income, revenue, money, follows because we're paid in direct proportion to the value we bring to the marketplace. So we hit it off, Laura and I uh, and Carol do the TNT calls now every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And that what we're going on, what, two years now? Yeah. Two years, so yeah, that's pretty powerful. Meetups, this is your specialty. So yeah, you know what? Symposium never would have ha happened had I not had a lot of experience with doing these little meetups, which are more informal, very local. Um, I use my office. They're usually groups of 10 to 20 people. Um, and we have an, a, a simple agenda. Uh, and everybody participates. Everybody brings something to the table for that meeting. Uh, and it has been fabulous. And I've had a meetup going since 2009 is when I started really formally doing that. And that was before meetup was even a term. I didn't even call it a meetup then. It, I adopted that and I used the meetup platform. And I have maybe about 150 people that are signed up. Some of them will never get to Modesto because they're not even in California. Um, meetup, the idea is they're using a website to make face-to-face -face connections. They were trying to turn that around. So um, when this whole pandemic came about and I couldn't have meetups, I took it the opposite way and we had some e-meetups. And now we were able to, we had four of them together and we had people from all over the United States have an opportunity to participate in a meetup and each one had its own uh, topic, 
uh, in particular an opportunity to do Q&A and to share their own experiences. Um, these meetups, they don't take a lot of uh, money. You just need a place you could meet in a rest at Starbucks. And you, know, and you don't need to have 50. You know, where two or more are gathered, there you go. Yes, exactly. And that's where it starts and it grows from there. I love that. Love that. And this is one of my favorite and clearly uh, an industry favorite as well. The Laura Buer Presents Training Replay Library. This, I started to mention about this earlier, something that started as let's do some skill builders. Let's help people do, uh, do their job better, number one, in skill, in terms of notary skill, and in expanding their knowledge in areas outside of loan signing. There is a lot of people out there that are uh, teaching that, are certifying that, you know, that's where all the business is. But really, I see myself as a business owner who has many specialties. And NSA is just one of them. And uh, there are a lot of areas in what we call the general notary work world, where there are lots of little specialty and niches that you can fill. So the idea started with that, but ultimately as we started growing, we realized that people didn't need just a one time, I see it once and then that's it. They really needed something that they could come back to, something that they could replay, something that they could uh, take notes with, see actual documents, have downloads. And that's what Laura Beaver Presents became. And so that is now actually a product uh, that Bill and I share. And it's all about, again, bringing notaries together to understand what the possibilities are, giving them skills, and giving them something that they can hold on to after that hour is over. I don't know if you want to add to anything to that, but it's been uh, really well received. And I just love the fact that people post uh, sometimes on, on social media about that uh, and how much it's helped them. Yes. I'm, t I'm totally excited by it. And, uh, you know, some of the training with um, when it comes to general notary work is so vague because all the state laws and everything's different in all the different states. So when you got so specific on those documents trainings, that was, this is one of my greatest uh, joys of collaboration is the Laura Viewer Presents because it brings so much value to so many other people. And Laura and I work really well together. So I love that. And that kind of ties right into the presentations and education component too, because you can partner with people on all, um, at all different levels to present where you don't have the expertise. You can do a co-presentation, very similar to what Laura and I are doing here, or you can bring a special guest in, or you could be that presenter for somebody else's group as well. Guys, what's really interesting about this, like if you look at it, <clears throat> Laura, when you came up with the symposium, you had to work with people who could technically be defined as a competitor. TNT. If Carol and I have the competitor or the scarcity mindset, we are two people that sell training programs about loan signing. So we could technically be, con be considered competitors, but that's just not how we think. And then when Laura, when you came into TNT, we are three people. We are all notary coaches. We are all loan signing experts. We are all experts in our own right. We all have our own skill sets. If we didn't have the heart or the philosophy to go into this, none of this would have happened. So we'll, we'll get a chance to talk about that here in just a couple minutes too. But it's so important not to disregard your quote unquote competitors as collaborators. There's a I lot of opportunity. Actually excellent collaborators. Uh, because you, you all know what you're doing, what your um, expertise is that you work on and who your audience is. And, um, and I can bring value in the general notary world to your audience who are really focused in on the NSA uh, world. And it just uh, really becomes a great mashup, uh, so to speak. Um, and Bill, would you also talk about, um, you mentioned you and Carol, but this is another place where people can uh, collaborate because you have a community and she has a community. Oh yeah, totally. So, um, and I think we get a chance to even talk about this a little more because we're going to talk a little bit about where to find possible oh, right. collaborators. So we can talk about that because your training programs, these, these groups have come up. So I'll go into a little more detail on that here in just a couple minutes too. Fine. 
Uh, <laughs> so the um, collaboration considerations, guys. The level of relationship. This is the level where you guys are at on that scale, one through five. Also, another level is where they're at in their own business, where you're at in your business. Your business needs really matter. It doesn't make sense at this particular time or not. We also have to consider the audience that we want to reach. Remember what I said earlier. Audience might just be your ideal customer. If you're looking for a training, uh, you might be other notaries. If you're looking for collaborations with attorneys, it might be them. You just wanna have an idea of what your audience is and whether or not this is a good fit. There's also the consideration of revenue split. If you are doing a income producing product, you wanna get that uh, hammered out in the beginning so there's no hard feelings down the road. On that same line, handling the money, who's handling it, how's it being processed, when's it going to be distributed, and then defining your role and responsibilities is also extremely important uh, in these types of collaborations. Uh, if you're taking Laura's advice and you're keeping the big picture in mind at all times, you want to put these things into place uh, so there's no, no animosity or resentment building. You know, it's very clear what's going on and it opens the door to communication. Hey, I know we agreed to this, but it's not working. Can we, talk, can we look at something else? That's what this thinking like this can do for you. And I'm going to offer you three other pieces of advice when you are looking for collaborators, something else to consider. Number one, always bring value. Number two, always stay in integrity. And number three, check your ego at the door. This is not all about you anymore. You have collaborators, you have an audience, and you have a vision that you're creating. And sometimes we have to check that ego so it doesn't get in the way and destroy relationships instead. The final consideration is your exit strategy. So exit strategy, not necessarily a negative thing, right? It just means the collaboration has come to an end and we are done. You might choose to collaborate again in the future. You might decide to make it a continuation, but this kind of stuff needs to be worked out. So you know what happens to the website, any marketing materials, the product if you've created one, and the mailing list. The mailing list is super important, especially if you're growing any type of business. We should all be capturing email addresses because that leads to more business down the road. But we need to understand who owns those, who gets those, and how it can be used. Super important, guys. I mentioned the personal development component, but we want it's so important that we know how to hold boundaries in a responsible way that allows for grace and dignity too. So many of us are really good at boundaries, but anybody who crosses it, we might just annihilate. There's a way to bridge that gap, and that's what personal development is really all about. It's learning the emotional intelligence. It's learning more about confidence, so you, ha you have more confidence, and you're not acting out of insecurity or fear, but you're acting out of empowerment. And most importantly, we're talking about collaboration. We need to work on interpersonal relationships, being responsible for our emotional wake, how we show up. Am I coming across this way or this way? What about their feelings? How are they receiving this information. All of that is super important and needs to be built into your life curriculum as well. <coughs> Excuse me, Laura. Where to find collaborators? This is where we were gonna talk about that. Right. So where, where do we find collaborators? So, you know, first of all, um, low hanging fruit, right? Facebook groups or forums, LinkedIn groups, uh, these are so easy now. There are, you know, it's like a directory for notaries. There are so many groups out there for notaries and specific. I'm into electronic notarizations. There's one for you there. I, I'm looking for mentors. There's one for, for you there. So there is lots of uh, different um, Facebook and LinkedIn groups. And there's also um, the TNT calls. So the TNT calls that we have over 200 people every single week. And there's a chat going on while we're talking because people are posting questions and they're starting to, to reach out. Anybody in Arizona on this call today, people are reaching out to each other. We see it all the time. That's a great place to reach out after the call. Now, meetups, I've talked about that uh, several times throughout the call today. Uh, showing up to a meetup uh, makes a big difference. And there are several people who have uh, come to my meetups or I've come to speak at one of their meetups who have... Uh, been able to do other things after that. 
You know, networking groups. Here's where I wanted Bill to talk about training, support, and communities. Would you talk a little bit about the couple you were going to address? Yeah, definitely. Guys, so most of, no matter what training program you've opted for, they probably have some type of either private Facebook group or community. That is not only a learning group for you, but inside of it, you can see who's showing up in a certain way. You can see who has, they're optimistic, they're sharing information, they're constantly posting or responding to other people's questions or sharing their journey. And you've got a lot of the example that you wouldn't want either. That's how you get to meet these people is use those groups, reach out, build a relationship with your trainer, build a relationship with the, the group leaders. The leaders always emerge. They're the ones that are sharing the information. They're being helpful to other people. Those are who you have the possibility to connect with. Just because you reach out and connect with somebody, though, doesn't necessarily guarantee that it's going to be a home run collaboration. It's okay to retract. Remember, we're going through levels. So we can connect and we can have a relationship like a friendship. We can have a bantering conversation. And then as it grows and uh, organically grows, we can decide, do I want to work with this person or not? Or, wow, he's so good at that. Or she's amazing at this. You know, sometimes it's a little bit of envy. You're just like, wow, how does she do that? That's crazy. I wish I could do that. And then you get to know them and it grows gradually that way. And just to mention, you know, I'm a name dropper. Um, Carol Ray, if you have taken Carol Ray's training, she has Notary to Pro graduates. She has a whole community. Um, she does a prime time uh, monthly radio call show. Actually, it's a Zoom call show for the more mature notary who's out there working. Um, she has great things going on. And so if you've taken her training, make sure you're participating in what she has to offer. Um, Bill has a fabulous community, Sign and Thrive community, Facebook uh, group as well. And there is, a, I just love it because I can go on there and people are posting questions. Other people are stepping up. It isn't always the leader who has to have the answer. And that's what I love is everybody is sharing. Um, my Laura Bewer presents, I have a Facebook group as well. And that's mostly geared towards general notary work. Again, very active if you are part of that um, Laura Bewer presents or LBP family. So look at who you've uh, taken training from or done workshops with because they may have their own group that follows up past that. Notary Symposium, you've already heard about that and we have a um, Facebook group for that. And then of course the NNA conference. Um, I have met so many people over the years. I have been to, I believe, uh, 14 consecutive conferences uh, as an attendee and as a speaker. And I just had so many opportunities to meet with people and those relationships have left the conference and have become relationships outside of the conference. Uh, and there's a Facebook group for that as well. Love that. Love that. So let's talk, let's talk about the, uh, the whole transformation, Laura. Yeah. So first of all, um, it's not a collaboration if you uh, don't uh, have some skin in the game, all right? You, it, each person is bringing something to it, and the idea is this isn't for this short project. It's, in the, it's for the long term. I'm looking at relationships, and I may or may not uh, produce a product or have a specific goal in mind. It's that I like, I enjoy working with them, that I enjoy sharing with them. And that I'm not thinking about how I can make money. I'm thinking about how I can have a relationship with this person. And when I do move forward, and I think there is going to be a collaboration going on, then I need to make sure that I'm putting myself out there, whether it's my skill, knowledge, financial resources, connections, I need to bring to the table. I can't just uh, be in that give and get. I give this much, so I get that much. It cannot be transactional. I give this service, I get paid in some way for it. This needs to be about how we grow things, how we make things bigger than, than zero, you know, before I started. Um, this is how we transform ourselves, the relationship, and what we do, and how we are perceived uh, by other people. And remember, you may end up helping somebody and you're paying it forward. There are many times that I'm doing things for people or supporting them 
uh, not because they did anything for me and not that they may even do anything for me in the future. I do that as a pay forward because there were people before me that helped me get to where I am. And this is a way for me to share that and help others move along uh, as well. Bill, yeah. could you take a couple of these? Yeah, definitely. Make it about something deeper. Uh, I think if you ever really want to appreciate your business and where it's going, remember that your business is your masterpiece, that this is really growing into something that is a reflection of who you are and the legacy that you're going to leave behind. This is no, there's no separation between you and your business when you're a solopreneur like this. Also, part of that, you'll have more integrity in your work and you should have more integrity in your work. So what is integrity? If we wanted to, there's so many definitions, but if you want to boil it down specifically to about collaboration, integrity is doing what you said you would do. That's also one of the hardest things because especially if we're enthusiastic and we're excited about things, that eventually wanes. It goes away and you've, you've got to fire yourself up and still do what you said you were going to do because if you don't, it uh, erodes the trust in the relationship. And without the trust, you can't get to level five. You can't get to level four, maybe not even level three because it'll definitely go away. And then the appreciation component. I think we talked a little bit about this, Laura, but just expressing appreciation when you receive sending a letter, sending a card, sending an email, just some way to express that appreciation. Or if you can post it publicly because yeah. that helps everybody. That could be a review. That could be um, any number of things. Sorry, Laura, I think I took over and you'll no, consistently okay. do the right thing. Uh, so this is like, this ties into confidence a little bit guys, but when you have integrity with yourself, when you wake up each day and you do the things that you know you're supposed to be doing, which will inevitably include the things that you are doing for other people, you will consistently want to do the right thing. Your confidence level soars. It's that competence confidence cycle. You will continue to do the right thing when you do the right thing. It's a perpetual most motion. And then finally, Laura. Yeah, you know, so I, I mentioned this. We don't want to focus on transactional relationships. I see that you can do something for me. This is not what it's about. Um, we're looking for long-term transformational relationships, relationships that grow as we grow, relationships that help not only each other, but others, right? That's what I think uh, uh, collaboration is really about. And so let's look at the next slide so we can kind of see where we start uh, ourselves. We're, we're a notary. And here I am, this little caterpillar, and I, you know, um, I'm going to go through uh, some changes all by myself, right? But when I work with somebody else, there's a component of enthusiasm, which builds momentum and uh, builds success. And you know what happens when you combine those things and you're doing that with other people? It's a kaleidoscope. I, I hope you can tell these are butterflies. But this is a kaleidoscope of butterflies and, and notaries who work together and collaborate with other people as well and expand themselves go from this caterpillar all by themselves to this kaleidoscope, this great group, a team, whatever word you want to put to it, um, of people who grow and enrich each other's lives. And I think that's where we want to go. I think absolutely, I love this. And enthusiasm is totally the secret ingredient, guys. The ingredient to enrolling others into your vision, the ingredient to help you be successful, to help you wake up each day and tackle your dreams, take yourself on every single day. I love this. So man, Laura, we've given lots of great examples, tons of great information here on how to create a collaboration. What do you say we let people try it on their own and then reach out to us and either share it or invite us if we can collaborate with them. You know, I love that idea, Bill. And so we encourage you to, uh, you know, if you took notes, watch this again and choose something or you have your own idea. Uh, and if you can uh, include us in some way, if there's a way we can support you to do this, whether it's just you want feedback or an idea or you want us to participate in some way, we're happy to do so because the more we can collaborate with you, the more collaboration you'll get to experience with others. I love it. And so I'm going to ask you guys 
the one question that can absolutely change your business forever when you ask other people is how can I support your business? Fill in the comments down below. If you have questions, you can post them down below as well. And if you'd like a downloadable document with some of these uh, specific instructions, you can visit this website. It's coachmelaura.com forward slash try it. And you can just download that directly from Laura. All right. So because we're not in a live situation today, uh, normally we do Q&A. Uh, so be uh, free, feel free to reach out to either one of us. We'll give our contact information. You can reach out to me at coachmelaura.com. Actually, I'll restate that, laura at coachmelaura.com. Uh, that's my new uh, email address. Feel free to do that. Or you can go to my website, coachmelaura.com, and schedule a quick call with me, uh, and I'm happy to talk to you. And I'm going to do mine a little bit different just because I'm buried in email. I'm going to do something a little different. For you guys, I'm going to give you my cell phone number. You can shoot me a text message anytime you'd like. I don't necessarily pick up this line for phone calls, so please schedule those in advance at notarycoach.com. But shoot me a text with any questions, ideas for collaboration, anything you've got at 602-309-0706. Laura, thank you so much for including me on this. This has been awesome. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Look forward to working on a new project with you All soon. Right. See you guys later. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.